Hey everybody, I'm Jack Reeder with Future Pastimes. I'm one of the designers for the expansions to the 2019 edition of the classic Dune board game. And a number of people have asked me, well, what is the difference between this 2019 edition and the classic Avalon Hill edition of the Dune board games. So I thought I'd do a little video where we would dive in and take a look at what those differences are. In a number of cases, it's uh, just stylistic differences or some updating of the art direction and a lot of clarifications of rules. The original Avalon Hill rule book was only like four pages long and didn't really have a lot of illustrations in it, whereas the Gale Force 9 rule book is over 20 pages long, has a lot of illustrations. It is a lot clearer on a lot of the rules, which is helpful, although there's always going to be questions, which is why the FAQ at this point is maybe longer than the rule book, but um, more about that in another video. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the other differences. Let me start with the board. So I'm going to show you the Avalon Hill edition of the board here. As you can see, it's very colorful. Um, the, the the one from Gale Force 9 is a lot simpler in, in that way. It's all the same territories for the most part. Um, although you do have OGAP up here instead of Old Gap, and it should be OGAP. So they actually got that right uh, in the original one. But, um, you know, whatever. It's, uh, it's make your own dune. But um, the... The colorful nature of this board uh, did create some confusion in some cases because you had, you know, people were wondering, well, what's the difference between these yellow territories and these brown territories? And the answer is there is no difference, even though, as you can see, Imperial Basin is technically protected uh, from the storm by the shield wall. Um, and so people are like, oh, that, that must be what that color is. But, you know, this territory is not protected and neither is, you know, Broken Land or some of these other brown territories. It was just for fun. Um, and so the rock territories are fairly easy to pick out on here. You can see the polar sink is also different because it has a different um, characteristics as well. It's, a, it's the only neutral space on the board. You can see that the Tleilaxer tanks here, very colorful. Um, so this was one of the areas where they were able to add a lot of color to the game because then a lot of the other components to the game are largely black and white. Um, the other area that's very colorful are, are the player shield. So here we've got the Atreides player shield. Um, we used to joke that uh, he looked a lot like Cliff Robertson. I don't know, but uh, but look at these buildings. These are fantastic. I I miss these crazy buildings. Um, I'm guessing that's Arakeen. Uh, it's hard to tell though. Um, and yeah, look at the shield. That is that's some kind of crazy fantastic right there. Um, now notice that uh, there's nothing on the back here, but this was your faction sheet. <laughs> that was it. That's all the information you had on what your faction did, all your startup stuff, your different abilities. Um, so they kept it all on there. To contrast, let's take a look at a shield from Gale Force 9. So here you've got uh, the character uh, on the front. Uh, on the back of the shield is strategy tips. So this is something that you didn't have in the Avalon Hill version. But um, these can be helpful, especially for new players as you're trying to figure out, well, what should I be doing? Um, what are my strengths and weaknesses for this faction? So these do a pretty decent job of that, but none of your faction information is there. It's on a separate sheet. So here we've got the Bene Gesserit sheet. It's got your setup, some details on your advantages and uh, your alliance ability, some extra info on why you've got two different art for your tokens. And then on the back, even more advantages. And uh, so trying to fit all of that, you know, just to contrast, let's dig up the Bene Gesserit shield. So there's Reverend Mother Mohim. Yikes. Um, but, you know, while this is definitely more than what's on the Atreides shield, uh, it doesn't really compare to all of this. And a lot of this is clarification. So that's one of the big things is that, you know, certain things like they're talking about here that you can coexist with other forces. That's all well and good, but it definitely created a lot of questions. And it's still something that a lot of people still have a little trouble wrapping their heads around, which is why the FAQ has a fairly large section on the Bene Gesserit advisors, which are the ones that can coexist. So that could stand to be a little bit clearer still, but the Gale Force 9 edition definitely, I think, clears up a lot of what the different factions can do. 
And, and that's another interesting element for, for the game. The Avalon Hill edition just had one um, set of rules, but it had some optional rules. Um, it was clarified as being um, a set of basic rules and advanced rules in the Gale Force 9 edition, which you know solves a lot of things for many players. Um, it creates problems for some like well what should we know which version is the official version and the original designers will tell you it's basic is the official version and advanced is just for more more theme and more fun and more moving parts um, I prefer advanced because I do think it does add a lot more theme to the game and we played with the optional rules back in the Avalon Hill days we figured it's all in there in the box let's use it so that was a major difference um, in terms of other details the Avalon Hill edition if you take a look at some of the the treachery cards, here we've got an example. This is the back of the treachery card, and I do like how they had uh, you know the word Dune. It uh, it works both ways. That's always fun. Um, but the cards themselves didn't have a lot of information on there. In fact, virtually none. This is about the only one. It has a little laser gun plus shield equals boom, and so that's about all the information you were going to get on the cards themselves. You know, here's a here's a snooper, poison defense. It doesn't really um, explain uh, certain elements of it, uh, like, you know, the, the truth trance uh, or here's the truth trance. What does it do? Well, it doesn't say on the card. You actually had a pad, a thick pad of reference sheets. And this explains what all the different treachery cards do. So when you've got, you've bought a card um, and you're playing the Avalon Hill version, a lot of times if somebody buy, buys a card and then just put it down, well, it's probably a, you know, a projectile weapon or a poison defense because you, you pretty much know what that, what that is if you've played the game at least once. But a lot of the other cards, when you see people are like, huh, what's, uh, what does that do? And they're like, oh, they probably picked up family atomics or weather control or something else that you're like, I got to understand when can I play this and what does it do? Um, so that was, uh, there's a lot of information on these on these pads. Also, you had... Um, all of the leaders for all the factions here is because the way that they did traders was you took all of your leader discs. So you've got, um, here's the Fremen, for example, all of your leader discs. Uh, and the backs of them are just blank. They're just white. So you would put all of your leader discs down on the table, mix them all up, and then you would everyone would draw four. And then you would take notes about, all right, you'd circle, this is my trader. And you could put little information about, who are my leaders that I know are safe if I've drawn them? And then um, then everyone would put their leaders back in, and then you'd flip them all over and you would reclaim them. Whereas with the um, Gale Force 9 edition, the way that they do traders is that they've got a deck of trader cards uh, that correspond to each of the leader discs. And so you're drawing those out, and then you're able to keep these. You're not having to write stuff down. Um, you know, writing stuff down is so 1970s. Um, now in the 21st century, there's always components that, that replace the need to keep notes and stuff like that for, for most games. So um, the other thing that you've got on here is you would write down your prediction if you were the Bene Gesserit. You'd also keep track of the turns. Everyone could individually track the turns. And as you can see, the Avalon Hill version went to 15 turns, whereas the Gale Force 9, they're like, you know what, 10 turns of Dune is plenty and it, and it really is um this was made for a very long game um and then you've got this little thing here is for tracking your atreides token loss in order to unlock your quisats hatterack um but the fun doesn't stop here there there's more on the backs of these you've got additional information like you have your optional or what we would consider advanced um faction advantages so for instance the emperor the starred sardaukar tokens you have five of those you only use those if you're using the optional rules in the avalon hill version um so that's that's what you had to do with these things another little difference again uh kind of an improvement if you look at the spice deck in the avalon hill version um, you flip it over and you're like, okay, great, 10 spice in South Mesa. And unless you were super familiar with the board, you're like, huh, we're looking for a kind of a skinny Florida-shaped section of the map. 
to try to find out uh, where we're going. The the Gale Force 9 edition, it at least lets you know where on the board this territory is. So you're like, okay, I'm looking at the board. Okay, yeah, it's Habanya Ridge Flat. That's that's where that is. So that's that's an improvement as well. And just to compare with the treachery cards, here you've got Truth Trance in, in Gale Force 9, and it explains the effect on the card. Uh, same thing even with stuff like the shields and uh, the weapons and, the, and other defenses. It lets you know you're playing it in your battle plan. It lets you know what you're protected from and that you can keep the card if you win the battle. So that's that's pretty helpful. Some of the other cosmetic things. Here's Spice in the uh, Avalon Hill version. Um, it's slightly sexier in the Gale Force 9, different color tokens, although they do sometimes get swallowed up by the color of the map. So it's it's hit and miss there with that. Um, some of the other, other changes between them, um, they, it, the Fremen, for example, in the optional, um, rules, they had the, the Feta Keen, but there was nothing about not needing to dial, uh, or to suspend spice when you're, when you're dialing. That was, that was an improvement that was made, a change that was, um, suggested by longtime players and the original designers molded over and agreed that that was a good change to implement. Also, the uh, Emperor's Alliance ability was jazzed up in the Gale Force 9 version. Um, in, in, in that version, the Emperor can pay for their ally to revive an additional up to three forces, and that's above and beyond the normal limitation of three forces revived per turn, as long as the Emperor is paying for it. So it's a little bit more because it, you know, just to be like, all right, I'm, I'm sharing my, my money is pretty good. Um, but, um, you know, the Emperor can pay for your treachery cards and pay for your shipping because any ally can do that. So we, they kind of felt like maybe it needs a little something more, although it is great to be the Emperor's ally because you are essentially getting free treachery cards, at least until your hand is full. Um, there were other clarifications, for instance, that the um, if you spent if you use a Karama card for your special Karama faction ability, here's the Karama card for the uh, whoops the Avalon Hill edition. Pretty pretty awesome artwork, I have to say. I really liked that image. It was one of my favorite cards to get just because there was so much they could do, but it looked really cool. Um, but those special advantages that your faction can do that is once per game. So, for instance, the Harkonnen being able to take somebody else's hand of treachery cards and then give them back um, some of, you know, they can take whatever they want from that and they're giving back the same number of cards. Uh, that's only once per game. If the Harkonnen has the Karama card, they can use it for, for that. There are some other clarifications, for instance, on Chome Charity. Um, if you have one spice, you do get one spice so that you're up to two. And the Bene Gesserit always collect Chome Charity in the advanced game. Um, some other uh, clarifications uh, or, or changes were like the guild allies cannot uh, ship back to reserves. Um, more clarifications on how the advisors work. Um, some stuff about the cheap hero. If you play a cheap hero in your battle plan, instead of a leader disc, you can play other treachery cards. And that's the, one of the rules is if you don't have a leader disc, you don't get to play treachery cards. It doesn't come up that often, but... It is important to um, to know, and so that wasn't super clear before. And again, that's because the original rule book was very short and just was cut straight to the chase. Here's what you're doing. Um, Dune is a game that has a lot of nuance, though, and that is because of the different uh, faction advantages working in conjunction with each other or against each other, and a lot of the card effects, it creates these edge case scenarios that don't come up in every game. They may not come up in one game out of a hundred. Um, but you're trying to figure out, well, what do we do in this situation? And the original Avalon Hill rulebook was not very much help in trying to figure those sorts out. The Gale Force 9 one, better, certainly better at, at helping you to do that. Um, take a look at the uh, the battle wheels. So this was pretty, basically the same. You put your leader disc in there, you dial it. Uh, it's a much bigger... Uh, to do, then uh, get the smaller, more efficient <laughs> version of the battle wheel. Um, they're definitely still blank on the back, and that is because they discovered in playtesting that if you had like a big dune 
logo or something on there and um, somebody was dialing, you could you could start to figure out, all right, if the Dune logo is going this way, they're probably dialing a two or a three. And so we didn't want people to be able to figure that out. That's why there's nothing on the back. And they may have uh, figured that out back in the Avalon Hill days, although, again, the, the art direction was a little more minimal uh, overall than compared to nowadays. Um, and that is basically it. Um, it's the old one still holds up. I mean, I, I've played this fairly recently. It is uh, very nostalgic to dive in with all the old artwork and components and elements and uh, and play the game that way. But I have to say that if I compare the two, I do prefer the Gale Force 9 one because I think overall it's got uh, a much better um, art style. And that is thanks to uh, Ilya, who had thrown that together and put it on Board Game Geek uh, during the dark ages of when Dune was just not available anywhere. People were making their own editions so that they could play this game. And um, so, yeah, he did a great job. Um, you know, we love that you've got the different, you know, card backs have the same aesthetic and, um, but, you know, individualized. Um, it makes for uh, a fun game. It looks great on the table and uh, it, it has been a lot of fun for us to work with uh, as designers uh, on the expansion. So that is, those are the broad strokes and what the differences are between the Avalon Hill and Gale Force 9 edition. Um, finding a copy of the Avalon Hill uh, edition is not easy. I got mine. It has the it's the second cover, the one that has uh, the guy who looks kind of like Sting because that one came out uh, right before the Lynch movie came out. And, uh, and then whew, it was gone. Um, and it's signed by the designers because I, I have access to those guys. So I was able to get them to sign my copy. They haven't signed this copy yet. So I got to get around to that. There's no reason why I, they shouldn't sign it. It's still, it's still the same game and they designed it. So that's it. Uh, let me know if you've ever played the Avalon Hill version and any interesting stories that you remember from that. Some of the differences that you like or don't like between the two editions. I'd certainly love to hear about that. And, uh, and anything else you have to say about Dune, um, I'm all about the Dune. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.